Hello and welcome to the Adoption and Fostering Podcast Midweek News Special. I should get some new music for that. I thought it'd be really good to just give another quick update to tell you how Scott is doing. I've chatted to Tris this week and um, he's more than happy for me to share some information, um, mainly because people are just so interested. Again, uh, thousands of emails and messages are coming to Tris and the family and myself. Um, Scott remains on the road to recovery. He's certainly doing much better than he was, but he's still in the high dependence unit. He's having good days and bad days. His trajectory is generally on the up. And there's also been some positive news in relation to his motor skills, which sort of remain intact and um, some stuff around memory. So that's all really good news, but it doesn't sort of distract from the fact that he remains on a high dependency unit. And when he leaves there, he's still going to have a long period of time in hospital. So that's where we're up to now. But again, we're sort of letting you know that Scott is rationed to five minutes of social media time every two hours. Consequently, getting questions is quite exhausting for him. So often he will then sleep for another two hours between because he's responding. He's hardwired to be polite and courteous, so he will respond. So please do get in touch with Scott. Send him messages of encouragement. But can we ask really politely and graciously, no questions. So statements, hope you're getting better. See you soon sort of thing. Um, things that he can just press like to um, and just really so he can remain connected but doesn't sort of feel slightly overwhelmed to have to reply to people and sort of get engaging conversations. I know it's hard because on social media Scott appears to be totally fine and it's odd. Start contrast the news of how ill he has been and remains and then to have these quite lucid moments of conversation with him. So that's what we're asking. Um Tris was very conscious as well that people have been so kind and generous to them. And um, it wasn't me, but some other people set up a GoFundMe page and he just wanted to sort of reach out and say, thank you so much. It is so fantastically appreciated. Um, I'd like to say, if you feel able to, uh, given all that's going on in the world, give a little bit of money to support them um, as they sort of try and navigate what is a really complicated time Um please do go to the GoFundMe page, which I have put a link to in the notes. Before I leave you, I thought I'd like to give you a really brief update in relation to some stuff that's been going on on the side of everything. Um, It's been a really busy week in Parliament. Yesterday, um, the 21st, there was a debate in relation to self-employment and adoption allowance, which I think was really interesting. I recommend you go and find that. That's um, on the Parliament YouTube website, and that's Again, you know, unanimous feelings around that. There's there's no doubts in everyone's mind that it just seems like a an issue of equality for all people who come forward to adoption. Um, and so that was interesting to see. Uh... <coughs> so before I go, I thought it'd be worth just updating a little bit about the busy week in Parliament. It seems there's an awful lot going on there. So I don't know, people are probably aware of not a fictional mum's campaign to get equality in relation to adoption, statutory leave for self-employed adopters. And I think that's a really interesting um, sort of anomaly within the context of adoption at a time when the government's pouring hundreds of thousands of pounds into recruiting more adopters. There's there's a potential pool of people who are sort of being, have got one more barrier than other people. Um. Uh, So that's interesting. I think it's got an awful lot of groundswell support from newly approved adopters and people at the very beginning of the journey. Don't see a lot of voices behind that later on the journey, but that's another story altogether. Um, I just wanted to share with you, um, last week an email came to the podcast, um, our Podmaster email account, and it was really interesting because it was from the House of Lords and there's a select committee looking at the Children and Families Act 2014, and that, that as an unusual act, there was lots of things that that, that impacted upon uh, adopt, contemporary adoption practice, so things around um, foster to adopt. There was a limitation or a, a kind of a time constraint on how long children should remain in the care system, and um, trying to speed up the process. Foster to adopt was about trying to speed up the process. A whole raft of other things. There was um, the kind of the infamous clause of removing the requirement to consider children's ethnicity when placing or or identifying a match. Um, So there's quite a few things in the 2014 Act that impact on adoption. And um, so I had a meeting with some folks from the the committee, uh, Clark, 
and you're sort of wanting to know what I thought about it, which I was kind of, so I had to wait, go away and think, well, I need to get some, uh, get an idea of what actually that means. Um, so I went off and I did my research and they totally sideswiped me because they said, look, we're not, we're, that stuff's important. But what do you think? And, um, you know, bigger question is, you know, what are the issues that are facing the contemporary adoption process in England? The critical issues facing the English adoption system, which totally sideswiped me and sort of my mind went into this kind of fizzing overdrive. Um, and I talked about a lot of things. I talked about, you know, the impact of um, matching and eth- of, of contact, the, the disparity, the racial disparity stuff. Uh, I talked about across a whole range of things, really, you know, they very keen to hear about contact and my, my views and thoughts on contact interested to hear about where independent the independent voices of adopters were within the UK, UK system but also about the voices of adopted people um, which again remain totally marginalised um, and I can't speak for that community but I can share my sort of experience of interacting with that community I guess that's a bit, I'm d- dancing around that because I don't want to get myself into trouble Um. So ultimately, um, and I, that was fine. It was 30 minutes. I mean, oh, thanks. That's really helpful. And about two hours later, I got an invite to go to the select committee. And um, I didn't know this thing was happening. So I'm going to, the, I think it's the 28th of April. I'm going to go up there and I'm going to sit before Baroness Tyler, I think it is, um, uh, is who's the chair. Um, and she's going to ask me a group of questions. I don't know what the questions are yet, but I, as soon as I got the questions, I'll put them out there and sort of get people to share what they think. And hopefully I can sort of represent you know, adopter on the street, you know, a normal people who've done, who've kind of walked this path and um, hope, and I think that they're keen to get the views, not just of the professionals um, and the movers and shakers in this, in the community and in the industry, but just the voice of people like myself and yourselves. So if pe- I will keep people updated as to what's happening there. If you're interested in the work of the committee, um, I've got a link in the show notes, which will take you to the hearings that already happened yesterday. And we've got Professor Beth Neal, we've got people like Lucy Peake, who've all been to the committee. And I really recommend listening to that because I think it's really well worth a listen to get experts giving an overview of the system and not selling anything, not trying to push anything, just actually giving evidence to the committee. With the podcast, we're going to we're, we're going to crack on and keep going with um, all of the conversations that we've got. I'm keeping recording them, but we're probably not service will not be returned to normal until Scott's feeling a little bit better. We might have a few guest people coming in and out, but we're kind of just going to pace it down. And I think people still find the stories quite valuable. Um, other than that, I don't think there's any new news. So I, I hope everyone's keeping really well. Again, thank you so much for the you know the the kind words, the you know the 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 people asking how things are going, um, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I really appreciate it. And if you want to put your questions through myself or podcast page or, you know, friends and family, please do that. But again, if we can just focus in on just kind of wishing Scott well, stuff he can just press like to, I think that would be really appreciated and just help him a little bit along with his recovery. So as always, bon jovi. Bon jovi.